Hi there, this is Bob Kramer. Welcome back to another episode of Kramer's Garage. Let me show you what we have in the garage today. This is a 1975 Honda Goldwing. And this is in pristine original condition. This is not a restored bike. It's a, uh, a very pristine all original bike. 32,000 miles on it. So what am I doing with it? I am uh, going to put a new Dynatech electronic ignition system in this bike. That's my plan for today. So here's the Dynatech system. We've got the uh, Dynatech electronic, digital electronic ignition. Two 5 ohm coils. These are uh, Magna coils, they say. This all comes as a kit uh, with coils, new spark plug caps, all the connectors and rubber bits, and uh, new ignition wire, seven millimeter ignition wire. And I'm also putting in new NGK Honda spark plugs. And uh, so anyway, that'll complete the package. So it's a, it's a complete ignition system replacement. Should be a good upgrade for this bike. Now to do that, I need to remove this uh, right side cover and um, I need to take out the air box, uh, so that's where we're going next. We're going to get things opened up so we can work, and uh, then I'll get back with you. Okay, so I've got the covers off, and uh, before I take the points out, the original points out, I want to uh, check the timing and see how far off it is. Um, because the gentleman who owns this told me that, um, that it has trouble starting and, and idles rough or something. So anyway, I just want to check the timing before I take it apart and see if it's off. Uh, if it is, of course, installing the new ignition system will correct that. So to get these, uh, out of the rubber, if you spray a little WD-40 on these, they slide right out. Otherwise, you might... Okay, that's how we take that apart, and then we can just simply unscrew these, or, yeah, there we go. And pull those off, okay. That one was loose, oh, that, this one was misfiring. That might have been his problem. Yeah, this one's definitely been misfiring. You can see this is burnt and the connection was very loose. So that'll be corrected now at this time. Spark plug is loose. Oh, those spark plugs are not very tight. They look pretty nice, but I'm going to put new ones in anyway. Um, okay, so I removed the spark plugs because that makes it very easy to turn the engine over by hand. So I need to turn the engine over by hand to check the timing. So let's see here. When does my light go off? Very late. Came back on. Okay. I'm on the number two position. OK. 
Okay, there's the advance mark. Right there, it should be firing. It should be going off. Oh, yeah. So that's firing well past top dead center. So the timing on this is way off. So that's probably his problem, why he's having a problem. So uh, putting the electronic ignition in should solve the problem. <clears throat> Somebody has over tightened these. I could disconnect my light now. Uh, well, somebody has grossly over tightened the screws. So this is how we get the screws loose when they've been over tightened. Okay, there's the original points. So the only thing I'm going to be using from this whole assembly is this little rubber grommet right here. I'm going to take that off and put it on the new wire. So once the points are out, you need to remove the cam and the spark advance mechanism. There it goes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to clean this out with WD-40. So, there. Okay. Now, there's a little pin back in here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's a little pin right there that um, engages the new cam for the electronic ignition. So, in order to remove the uh, original cam, you need to disassemble the spark advance mechanism. So I've got it all apart here on the bench, and I'm just going to clean everything and put it back together. Um, I'll put a drop of oil on these posts here, and that's it. You don't want to put much lube in there at all. But um, anyway, yeah, so uh, I'm going to put that back together now. And then the, uh, the uh, Dynatech uh, cam, actually it's not a cam, it's a magnet. The Dynatech magnet then will replace the original points cam. This is the Dynatech magnet. So let's put it back together with the Dynatech magnet in there. This works by centrifugal force, so these are just weights really that um, that swing out with centrifugal force and cause the the uh, cam or the in this case the magnet to move which advances the timing slightly all right now these posts have a little fiber washer on one on each side and then i'm going to put just a tiny drop of oil on it that and like that this side might be too much oil so we'll just take some of it off
And I suppose that it would be very easy to put this together wrong. So just uh, pay attention to how it came apart and put it back the same way. So, as you can see, I've got the springs on there. It's all there. Now, the last piece of the puzzle here is these little, little um, eclipse. And these are kind of fragile. You have to be careful with them. But, and uh, also, you've got to be careful not to let it fly across the room. That one's in. That one's in. Okay. And then this guy goes here. You can see there's a magnet here and another magnet here. They're 180 degrees opposed. Okay, if everything is correct, when you turn this, it should spread the magnets. I mean, uh, weights. There we go. Okay, so this shaft here needs to have a light coating of oil on it. So I just put one drop of oil there and then spread it with my finger. Now this has a notch in it and it fits over a peg and you can see that peg right there. So this has to go in that way so it engages. There, that's engaged right now. After you uh, tighten the bolt, make sure everything still moves freely, like that, and then you can put in the plate. Now, I've found in the past this plate has to go this way, so um, yeah, that's what I thought. So. They put a, a clamp here and clamped that wire in position. However, it will not come out through the exit hole in the case uh, with that clamp there. So I have to remove that. This wire goes under a little clip right there. I'm not going to snug that down yet because, well, maybe I can. <sighs> okay. There. My wire is attached. And it's over here. And then the next thing to do is to get power to it. And we 
do that in here. That's going to be this wire. I have to put a uh, splice in it. And they give you the splice with the kit. Dynatech recommends that you use the green and white wire that goes to the turn signal flasher. So that's 12 volts when the ignition is on. That'll when the ignition switch is on, this will have 12 volts on it. And that's what we want. So to utilize this connector that they supplied. I need to do that. Slip the red wire in that comes in the Dynatech kit. Red wire and then crush this down with pliers. Alright, this is the uh, turn signal flasher so now I just put the green wire or white and green wire back on like so and I can mount this back in its original location like that and then there's a nice neat installation then the red wire I'm going to follow the wiring harness and I will zip tie this in place later So now, as we can see, I've got my uh, red wire for power here, and these are the wires that go to the uh, actual Dynatech ignition. So they're going to be connected inside here, right in here. Okay. So here's where we need to refer to Dynatech's uh, wiring diagram, which is here, and we see that the white goes to blue. Okay, this will refer to which side of the bike this is, uh, the coil is going to be on. So white from Dynatech goes to blue to the coil, black to yellow. So white to blue, black to yellow. And I think I should mark those with colored tape for future reference. Since I happen to have both yellow and blue colored tape. Just bring this over here in case my uh, old timers kicks in and I can't remember white to blue. So I'm going to put a piece of blue tape on the white wire. And this is just for future reference. And a piece of yellow tape on the black wire. Slide the red wire down inside the rubber boot, like so, and bring this up. There it is connected. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and static time this. Uh, and then change the coils and then I'll be done. So on this bike the uh, kickstarter sticks and I couldn't make the engine roll over smoothly with the kickstarter. Uh, the kickstart attachment point is in the way of the um, bolt on the back of the rotor that allows you to turn the engine with a wrench. So I had to uh, tie wrap the kickstarter down to get it out of the way so I can put a wrench in here to turn the engine. And of course with the spark plugs out it turns very easily with a 3 8 
ratchet and a 12 mil socket. So now you can see my timing. There I'm rolling past number one. I don't know if you can see the marks in there or not, but um, somebody painted the advance marks red. So there's the advance for number two. And my light's going to just come on. There, my light just came on. And if you look in here, I am on the uh, T2 firing mark. Okay. So that's done. And I also already set uh, T1 while you guys weren't looking. So T1 and T2 firing marks are all set. So the last thing to do now is uh, put the new coils in. And um, I'm going to take a break for lunch and then do that. And before I go to the coils, I'm going to go ahead and put my oil cap back on here and also the cap on the back of the rotor because if I come back to this an hour later and those caps are off, I'll forget to put them on and then I'll start the bike up and sling oil everywhere. I've never done that before, but there's always a first time, right? Okay, I've uh, just finished installing the new coils. There they are right there. These are 5 ohm coils. Um, according to the marketing, they're supposed to be a higher performance coil. Um, I hope that's the case. Anyway, um, so I've connected the, they came with two pieces of wire, long pieces. So I connected the pieces of wire and I numbered them what cylinder they're going to go to. So here's number one. So I just need to pull the number one wire out to its respective spark plug hole and cut it to the correct length and then do all of them the same. So that's going to go there, number one, and that's going there. So I'll just go ahead and trim these to length, put the resistor caps on, put the plugs back in and it should be ready to run. Five's a go, 28's a no go. Go, no go. Go, no go. Boy, they come properly gapped right from the factory. Okay, I always put uh, anti seize on my spark plugs so they don't get stuck in the hole. I don't know about all you fellas out there in YouTube land, but uh, I always use a torque wrench when I tighten my spark plugs. And I tighten them to about 12 foot pounds when they're new. And I'll go a little bit more than that if they've been used because the aluminum washer's already been crushed once. So leave me some comments again and uh, let me know what you think. Okay, for the rubber boot, I always uh, just put a little bit of a uh, smear of Vaseline inside here to make it easier to put together. Like that. Wipe off the excess. And then, Keep in mind, this boot 
goes that way, these nubs face in toward the engine. And uh, number three is going to go here. Like that. Number two. I mean number one. Over here. Like that. They slid right in there nicely. And then there's still Vaseline on there, so that'll help get this rubber boot to slide on there. And then once you've done that, push this down over your spark plugs, like so. And then just push the rubber boot back into place. This is where a, a blunt instrument is handy. You don't want to use, I don't use a screwdriver because you might damage the boot, but you can push on it with a socket extension. And there it is. I'll put the other side together and and we'll uh, fire it up and see if it still runs. Okay, so I started it up. It started up like immediately. I'll show you. So it's just ran for a minute or two. But uh, anyway, here we go. So it starts immediately. The owner said it was a little hard starting before. So I'm going to let that warm up for about five minutes or so, and then, uh... I'm going to let it warm up for about five minutes and then sink the carburetors. Then I can put everything back together and call it a day. I wonder why it's idling so high. I push the choke all the way in. Play in the throttle cable. I'm 